While the world continued to obsess over Michael Jackson's changing appearance throughout his lifetime, something else kept changing on the King of Pop that went largely unnoticed. His hair. Throughout his life in the public eye, Michael Jackson wore a variety of hairstyles due to changing trends, personal style choices, as well as to conceal well-documented injuries that caused damage to his scalp. In this video, we document how Michael Jackson achieved some of his most iconic hair looks, from music video shoots and album covers to award show appearances, with first-hand accounts from his longtime hairstylist and wig makers. Here's the detail. When Michael Jackson rose to child superstardom as part of the Jackson 5, him and his brothers sported natural hairstyles in a variety of lengths, commonly referred to as the Afro. Indicative of the successes in the civil rights and black power movements of the 1960s, the next decade saw a new wave of African Americans expressing their political commitments by adopting more traditional African styles. The Jackson 5 symbolized a whole new generation of performers who no longer felt the need to assimilate to white ideals, but embraced their natural hair texture as a signifier of black pride. As a result, throughout the 1970s, Michael and the Jackson brothers helped popularize the era-defining style in its various forms. However, in 1979 and upon the release of his Off the Wall album, Michael Jackson adopted a whole new look. Part of this reinvention meant the mismatched colorful costumes he wore with his brothers were gone, to be replaced with sleek tuxedos and sparkling rhinestones. His hair was also cut short, and Michael spent several years testing products to help define his curls, to give his hair a healthy and glossy appearance. In this rare footage recorded in 1982, as he was preparing to shoot the Thriller album cover, Michael Jackson shares some of his hair secrets, stating that he used water to give his hair a glistening quality, hairpins to keep his hair down and maintain his parting, as well as his disdain for any kind of hair mousse. I hate mousse. Well, no, but just, just a little bit. I know you might make your hair. Yeah. Here's a short interview of Orlando hair salon owner Finney Thompson, who Michael Jackson frequented over a period of five years while traveling the country on tour during this period. This is Rudy. That's Michael. That's my son, Wendell. That's me. Pliny Thompson knew Michael Jackson better than most in Central Florida. For about five years back in the 80s, he did the pop legend's hair every time he came to town. I used to ask him about the tabloids. Oh, really? Yeah, I used to ask him about the tabloid, and he said that he told me that most stuff that in the tabloid he didn't know anything about until he read it. Pliny says he had to sneak Michael in his shop after hours. He always treated the king of pop like any other customer. Yeah, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't run into that problem at all. You know, he got all the privacy he wanted. In return, Michael bought him one of the first ever VCR TVs. He also gave him this autograph poster. During the thriller period, Michael Jackson's look would be defined by his iconic Jerry Curl. A glossy, loosely curled style achieved by using a chemical relaxer to first loosen up the hair's wave pattern, and then another chemical solution would then be added to permanently secure the looser, curly look. Spraying expensive bottles of hairspray called activators into the hair would then provide a glossy sheen. The style often being called a wash and wear hairstyle meaning the wetter it was, the better it looked. The hairstyle quickly grew in popularity with many other male celebrities following suit and soon became a cultural staple for the black community. The jerry curl was so pervasive and yet so distinctive on each person who wore it, depending on the cut and styling. Michael Jackson's thriller curls were shorter on top and longer in the back, with loose curls cascading down his forehead. He had his side parting styled in and his baby hairs slicked down blending into his sideburns. However, his crowning glory would never be the same after January 27, 1984, when Michael Jackson's hair caught a blaze while filming a Pepsi commercial in front of an audience of 3,000 extras. Caused by a pyrotechnic firework going off too early, the accident ultimately caused second degree burns to the pop star's scalp, leaving a permanent palm-sized bald spot on his crown. 
and the immediate aftermath. Some believed Michael Jackson's use of styling products contributed to the accident, as many that gave the hair a shiny look contained ingredients like glycerin and moisturizers that can be flammable, especially for afro-textured hair, which will burn more readily than long, straight, limp hair due to more airspace that makes oxygen available for combustion. However, Michael Jackson spoke out to express his hurt upon hearing these assumptions, clarifying that during the shoot, Jackson had only used water, and there was no way that the manner he styled his hair caused the injuries he suffered as a result. Nonetheless, it should be noted that Jackson made these comments while also seeking legal action against PepsiCo, in which any knowledge that the plaintiff may have also contributed to his injuries would have certainly been used against him in court. In a mere matter of weeks, Michael Jackson was back in the limelight accepting the Guinness Book of World Records Award for Thriller, becoming the largest selling album of all time, as well as attending the glistening Grammy Awards, where he also made history, winning a record eight awards that night. To hide his injuries, Jackson wore a clip-in hairpiece during these high-profile events, and in the run-up to his victory tour, the Billie Jean singer went through several scalp surgeries in hopes of resolving his damaged scalp. However, these procedures weren't given enough time to heal before Michael began a grueling schedule of performances as part of the Jacksons tour, in which hair pieces had to be worn throughout. Michael Jackson's hair during the Victory Tour was characterized by its looser, stringier appearance. The more relaxed look was achieved with a mixture of activator and water, with no doubt that Jackson's perspiration during his high-energy performances would have added to this overall look. In the years after Thriller, Michael Jackson grew his hair longer in the back but kept it shorter in the front so his curls would continue to frame his face. When Michael Jackson revealed a whole new look in his bad music video, the first part presented him sporting shorter hair. However, once Jackson transformed into a buckle-bound rock star with a fierce attitude, his hair suddenly appeared much longer. He maintained the part in his hair and combed out the curls, adding extensions in the back, making his hair appear bigger and looser, as opposed to the small and tight curls he had earlier on, a long shag that he constantly tossed and flipped as he danced, all with the help of a wind machine. The bad era would be defined by Michael Jackson's much longer, looser curled look, which he achieved by applying perms to his hair and adding in extensions to increase length and volume. While on tour, Jackson would often wear his hair in a loose, low ponytail, a more secure style when performing and in more humid climates. Michael would also repeatedly be seen wearing hats, whether his signature fedora, a la Smooth Criminal, or something more casual while on the road. After years of touring, and as he entered the 1990s, Michael Jackson was contemplating a new look. Recommended by his sister Janet, Michael was put into contact with Carol Lemire, a prominent hairstylist and wig maker who had many years working in fashion and styling the hair of other celebrity clients. It was really funny because I went to Havenhurst. And when he always stayed at the back of the house where he went up these stairs. And when I knocked on the door when he was told I was there, he slammed it in my face and asked me if I could go back down and wait by the car. So while I was waiting by the car, I seen my, um, Michael, and it was like the Pink Panther. He was sneaking behind bushes to get into the house, the main house to change because he had like a shower cap on and I guess he didn't want me to see him like that. He was real shy at first because he liked my hair because uh, I'm Native American and Russian and he liked my hair because I have dark black long hair and I'm pale. And we just got to talking and I seen what the problem was where he got burned and told him what I could do. And from then I started working with him. I, ha I had pieces made and he, st he, had, he still had hair, but I also taught him how to care of it, you know, how to work with the front. Because sometimes when people use clips, you just pull more hair out. So, And there were times when, if you notice, he wanted a curl in the front, I would put a curl in front. Under Carol's guidance, Jackson began to experiment more, switching between his looser curled looks with perfectly tonged tresses at the front 
to straighter blown out styles with the use of much larger hair pieces and extensions to give volume on top. By the time he began shooting the video for the lead single of his next album, Dangerous, Michael Jackson's hair appeared longer in the front and the loose wave tussled style with prominent sideburns was less manicured and more befitting for a rock star performer. While making public appearances and performing on tour, Michael would sport a curlier version. Whether completely down or half up and with a variety of combinations of loose curls at the front. In contrast, Michael Jackson's slick back ponytail for his In The Closet music video gave him the fashion edge. And his blown out waves in Remember The Time reminded viewers of his more romantic side. For many fans, the latter video is believed to be the first time Michael Jackson appeared wearing a full wig. However, Lemaire, who styled Jackson's hair during the shoot, can confirm that was not the case. Oh, it wasn't a wig. It was a small hair piece on top, and I did extensions. Right, okay. Like the curl you would see, I would always throw that in somewhere. I don't know if we had a curl on that one. Um, they were always extensions in a hair piece. I never put wigs on them. Never. Never. He okay. So what, can I, I don't understand this, but what is the difference between a hairpiece and a wig? A hairpiece is something that you, a man can wear on top, and then you could put extensions on the bottom instead of putting a whole hairpiece on them. To yeah. make a person more comfortable because it's like it's their hair. You know, it's different when you put them in a full wig. It's like they don't feel the same. I never told him, but I used to give his hair pieces. I didn't tell the woman whose hair pieces they were, but I would give them to her to get put on Little Richard's head. <laughs> Isn't that funny? You know, I never knew he was wearing Michael's hair pieces. As he entered the mid-1990s, Michael Jackson became increasingly dissatisfied with his front hairline. In this image, it is clear where Michael's natural hairline ends and where his hairpiece starts. Jackson over the years would make several attempts to disguise his larger hair pieces and help blend it into his natural hairline with the use of makeup and strategically placed strands of hair. In the summer of 1995, the artist decided to adopt a new look for the release of his history album, cutting much of its length in the back but keeping volume on top, which was typically styled in a center part. Although, Michael experimented with different looks over the coming months. However, the shorter hairstyle was just as short-lived, and Michael Jackson reverted to longer looks in 1996 as he prepared for his upcoming tour. While on tour, Michael showcased styles that weren't dissimilar to those from the Dangerous Era that had now become his signature. Loose long curls worn down in a low ponytail and regularly topped off with a black fedora. By the late 1990s, Michael began wearing shoulder-length blown-out looks that would ultimately define his style for the next decade. Apart from a few fleeting experiments, Michael Jackson exclusively wore long, lace front hair pieces with a center part. By this time, Michael had permanently tattooed the front of his hairline to help make it look fuller and darker. However, his longtime hairdresser Carol Lemire contests that this procedure could well have killed the follicles and caused further hair loss at the front of the hairline, only adding to the expanding bald spot Jackson was already suffering with after multiple failed procedures and illnesses, causing him to lose even more of his natural hair. Doctors said, said they could fix the burn, they could get it to where he wouldn't have to wear nothing, but that never happened. He went to, I think, maybe three different surgeries, and I, it just finally it was like, let's stop. This ain't gonna happen. I mean, it would get infected, and it wasn't that big at first. You know, I did things totally different than this person that came in after. He didn't, if a hair piece is covering your top, there's no reason why you have to be tattooed. But there are products out there, which I'm sure was used after, and it probably killed his hair follicles, because I've had this happen to my own other clients which makes me furious when people do something like that, because he did have hair. In the last years of his life, Michael Jackson wore larger hair pieces that covered much of his natural hair. However, when he was rehearsing for his ill-fated This Is It concert series, the King of Pop revealed at least some of his natural hair and gave a glimpse into how he may have planned to wear it during the show. 
In typical Jackson style, the smooth criminal singer filmed concert interludes and rehearsed his classic hits sporting his signature wavy locks, although noticeably thinner than in past years. After Michael Jackson's sudden death in June of 2009, his autopsy report confirmed that Jackson's hairline was permanently tattooed and that the singer wore a hairpiece attached to his natural hair. His autopsy referred to the singer's hair as sparse and that the majority of it was concentrated below the crown of his head. Thanks for watching. One thing I realized while researching this video is that Michael Jackson never once experimented with color when it came to his hair or hair pieces. What other hair looks would you have liked Michael Jackson to try out? And what hairstyle do you think he would be wearing if he was young today? Thanks again to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. Go to NordVPN.com to get a two-year plan plus four additional months with a huge discount. For more info, check out the link in the description box below.